Live from the Oracle Conference Center in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's theCUBE, covering the Oracle Cloud Launch, brought to you by Oracle. Now your host, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here, this is theCUBE, live in Redwood Shores, California, Oracle's headquarters. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder. So look at Angel, my co-host, Dave Vellante, founder of Wikibon.com. Uh, we are here pre-gaming the Oracle Cloud Platform launch. Larry Ellison and executives will be laying out the new platform updates and momentum, and we're going to cover that here live on SiliconAngle.tv. And of course, we're pre-gaming, getting all the interviews, and setting the table and trying to dissect what this means. Our next guest is Carl Olofsson, Research Vice President, Application Development Deployment. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, welcome back. Thanks. Good to see you. Yep. So I love having analysts on theCUBE because we can actually break it down. <laughs> so we got two, two analysts, and you and Dave. So, um, we're teasing out, we can't really go in. We have the release where we have it in front of us. We can't really tease it out, but it's Oracle Cloud. Right. And they're competing and you know, Larry Ellison go back five years, false cloud at Salesforce, hitting them hard. Yep. And then all of a sudden that sea change in the middle of their investment in engineered systems. Right. So you saw that Sun acquisition, all that stuff going on within Oracle and then all of a sudden cloud is the centerpiece. Right. Big shift. Right. What's your take on it so far and where do you see it kind of connecting today? Well, I mean, when you talk about those two trends, you talked about engineered systems, which is a part of the larger converged systems movement that we've seen. That is one trend, and cloud is another trend. So converged systems all about trying to improve your ability to main, maintain large systems in, in already very complex IT environments. What's another way to go? It's to move some of that operation to the cloud so that you don't have the complexity of managing those systems yourself and you have it running on, as Larry likes to say, professionally managed systems, <laughs> right? So uh, we're seeing a lot of interest in, in the cloud in general. There's, there's big uptake, certainly on the SaaS mm -hmm. dimension. We've been waiting for that at IDC. We've been predicting for the past few years that cloud was going to take off, but he said, you know, we don't know exactly when, you know, because timing is one of those things where if you could actually answer that question, we'd be, you know, playing the stock market instead of being analysts, but, um, but uh, it has been taken off and now platform as a service is sort of like the next step where people who have complex applications homegrown or they're looking to evolve or develop those applications, they want a platform that can support the things that they need to do and, the cloud, and that's a cloud platform because it gives them the agility but a private cloud platform is actually pretty hard to manage, yeah. it's complex, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of pieces to that. You hit the nail on the head, I want to get Dave's perspective on this too because you know, Larry Ellison has shifted his role over the past few years and He's engaged, I mean, he sees this market exploding. He makes comments over the past few years like, oh, just, we'll just call it cloud. But what he really sees is the yeah. middleware market and his bread and butter in apps, at, at not at, at risk, but they have a huge position in the marketplace. So Dave, Larry Ellis is his CTO. He's totally engaged in the product line. Can you guys both comment on what that means from a technology standpoint? Because I asked Amit Xavier earlier about the, how easy it is to just do middleware in the cloud. Oh, they have a hackathon this weekend. <laughs> the past market truly isn't grown up yet. Mm -hmm. So the middleware is the battleground. So mm -hmm. what's your thoughts, well, Dave? Well, look, I mean, the, the bread and butter is database as a service, right? right. We, or database, and database as a service is kind of the hot new thing. Um, we were talking off camera. You've talked to a number of customers. I think we both agree there's a lot of potential momentum there. Right. What are you seeing in database as a service? Well, I think that the, the leverage is really at the past level. In other words, rather than pure database as a service where you write your application on your own systems and they communicate with the database in the cloud, that's awkward, there's performance issues involved. It's much more, um, it, it works much better if you have everything in the same cloud platform. And so using middleware that is, that is part of the same environment as the database just makes makes a lot more sense. So what do you make of initiatives like Cloud Foundry? Which you essentially, you know, they don't own the database, unless you count Greenplum, but, but that's not really you know, the core of the global 2000, right? So um, going into the market, trying to build an ecosystem approach, right. obviously yeah. reliant on right. the global 2000 who's using Oracle or maybe SQL Server or others. Sure. So what do you, what's your take there on the landscape? Well, for one thing, I want to point out that there are a lot of different kinds of applications you might want to put in the cloud. Some of them are amenable to say a straightforward Java implementation against a relational database, but others have different requirements. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to have a variety of choices, you know, going with a Cloud Foundry approach where you have an environment in which most of the elements you need have been, have been thought out and put together for you. Um, you know, so it makes sense for certain kinds of applications. So the ecosystem approach can work. 
Sure, absolutely, yeah. And I then, mean, yeah, I mean, you've got, let's make a distinction too between the applications, uh, there are applications that, that are going to run the cloud, they're going to be web-based, they're going to drive um, mobile devices, but they're very session-oriented. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously gaming applications come to mind, there's certain kinds of, you know, retail, especially yeah. location-aware retail applications and things, and they need certain kind of database functionality. They're probably going to use some combination of a NoSQL database of some kind, you know, or, and a relational database on the back end to manage the the business, you know, dimension of what they're doing. And so, but Oracle's been pretty clear with its strategy. I mean, it's going after integration, right? So Absolutely. you talked earlier about some of the advantages there. What are customers telling you? Um, I know it's a little early, for especially for database and a service, and even platform as a service, but right. what are you seeing there in terms of some of those advantages? I mean, we don't have a huge sample size, obviously, so I can't say it's 10%, a handful, though, you know. Right? I mean, it's a handful, but uh, they've been pretty, uh, pretty happy with where they're going. And, and the first thing you do when you move to the cloud is you move what you already have, what you already know, and then you, you go from there. Then you can take advantage of the, of the, of the flexibility, of the agility that the cloud environment gives you. you know, so step one is to, you're not, they're not starting from a blank slate, most of them. They're starting from, you know, you know uh, we have needs to, to evolve our application beyond what we can manage in our own in-house data center. I mean, another option. The complexity issue, though, is brings up a good point. I mean, the Oracle customers their footprint is massive, so for them mm -hmm. to roll cloud in really is a strategic win for them if they can pull that off. Oh, sure. The momentum alone last quarter was, what, 1,400 plus new customers. Now, I don't know how many they've lost to the cloud, so there's a little bit of cannibalization going on that was kind of discussed in the earnings. Guys, thoughts on that? I mean, obviously you have to eat your own before someone else eats it, kind of cannibalization. What is that thought? What are your thoughts on that? The good move? I, I mean, I'd love to get your take on this. I've said a lot about some of these large companies. I've certainly said about IBM and HP. They've got to shrink in order to grow. You're not saying the same thing about Oracle. They're sort of holding on to that base, largely, I mean, there's a big maintenance component there as well, but their cloud business starts to kick in now. Right. They seem to be doing a good job managing that transition, and their, their business, seem, it seems clean to me. I mean, you got infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, and it's all rental, and it's clean. Right. You know, a lot of companies are like, well, is that really cloud, or is that kind of actually yeah. on-premises? Oh, well, it's actually on-premise. So, so I think there's a clean story there. My question to you, Carlos, is is, it, is, it, uh, is the new growing fast enough to offset the, 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 the headwinds on the old? Well, it depends on the time frame you're looking at, I guess, <laughs> answering that question. If you're looking at it let's year, say, after, year by year. Let's say over the next 24 months. Over the next the 24, well, okay, so I think looking at, looking at, and I'm not a prognosticator of, of revenue, of course, but um, in general, I would say, you know, you said you have to shrink in order to grow. Uh, in Oracle's case, it's probably more like you have to accept more flatness in order to grow. I wouldn't say yeah, shrink. Right. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah. But uh, it is the case that when you move from a perpetual use license model to a subscription model, there is going to be a bit of a hit there because you have customers who were writing a big check up front in order to use your stuff. Now they're writing a subscription check over that that's over time. Mm -hmm. So over time, that that revenue stream amortizes and it and it works out to be growth. That's why I asked you the question of what, what kind of time frame yeah, you're talking right. about. Yeah, over yeah. time it works out, you know, it uh, overcomes where you were. Well, over been. 10 years, it's... Or even uh, five uh, years, uh, I would uh, say. Very even exciting business, actually. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and not only that, but it's a more stable business because you, you have an ongoing revenue stream. One of the things that's really, um, you know, gives a lot of heartburn to guys who do who are product managers in that field, as I used to be in my in my earlier days, is is this worry about keeping people on maintenance and getting them to buy upgrades because that's what your revenue stream is. But when the issue is let's get them on a subscription, now we know that as long as we're satisfying their needs and they're being successful, we can keep them on that subscription. That's a much more stable revenue stream. It gives you a much more stable for your yeah. Uh, so I, I use ten years because the, the the back of the napkin math is about you actually end up spending about a third more <laughs> over a 10 year period and the margins are just as good. Well, I, this yeah. brings up the question of, you know, race to zero BS that's kind of been kicked around about Amazon. Dave, you called it on theCUBE. There's no race to zero, there's real dollars being there. And then we had the debate, the value shifting. So yeah. I'm a big believer that commoditization is evolution in industry. Certainly business models will change, but value has to shift somewhere. Right. So I want to get your guys' thoughts. So race to zero is an easy conversation. Oh, it's dri driving prices down to zero, but okay, if the price is going to zero and the margins in coming to another area like mm -hmm. apps or whatnot, 
and the timetable changes, this is the new economics. What's your thoughts well, on Well, Amazon's this? turning hardware provisioning into a, uh, like a service, a software right. as a service. So Where's Oracle's value? So that, I'll see that as a racist deal. And so it's very hard to compete with that. Oracle can compete because it's got, it owns the database, it right. owns the middleware, it owns right. the apps. It's got, it's got differentiation that drives value. But that's, so that's my sort of high level take on it. What do you think? Well, I, I, I agree and I think that when you're dealing with somebody like Oracle, and they're not the only ones, but we're here to talk about Oracle, yeah, so yeah, let's sure. talk about them. We can talk about others too. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that you're dealing with somebody who is uh, optimizing their, all the dimensions of the system mm -hmm for the service. So they have complete control, which no, you know, and that's what you need. They can control everything from the iron right up to the top of the software to make it fit, um, not only for the kind of service they want to deliver, but within the cost parameters that they need. Uh, and what, do you, what do you make of this sort of push button simplicity to go from on-premise to, to the cloud that Oracle sort of putting forth as a value proposition? Is it, is it really that simple? <laughs> Well, I don't know how you define push button. I mean, there's well, going to be Larry's some, term, right? you know, there's going Fantastic. to be some, I mean, you have to at least move the data and yeah. uh, there are issues with that, as you yeah, know. Because we're talking about running systems that can't be interrupted, so yeah. um, that's a little complicated, but I mean, I think they are trying to make it as simple as possible. Look, they're well, not- Well, test dev, to, that's a, kind of a no-brainer, but- A test dev is absolutely a no-brainer. Um, and in fact, that is the strongest business model, and that's what we're seeing taken up first, by the way, in terms of database, you asked before about database yeah, yeah, as a right. service. Um, that's what we're seeing taken up first is the test dev model because um, that is the model that benefits the most from the kind of agility and uh, sort of um, self-service um, capability that the cloud gives you, right? I mean, in other words, um, and a lot of people don't necessarily know this, but um, one reason why applications can't evolve fast enough to meet the changing needs of the business is that you have to schedule time and resources for your development environment in order to make those changes and test them. Um, but if you have a more agile environment, which you can sort of say, okay, today we're going to test this, boom, okay, the database is ready, let's go. I mean, yeah. what a huge difference right. that is. Instead of having to wait a week for the IT changer. guys to set aside... Well, this brings up your control storage. thing. So the last couple of minutes, I want to drill into this whole control. I mean, having, you know, optimizing for the cloud service is a great thing. There is control. So we had this debate going back to the first year of the Cube when Paul Moritz laid out the VM, where when he was the CEO of VMware, VM, VM where he laid it out the, you know, basically the cloud, mainframe in the cloud, so to speak. The question is, <laughs> at what point does the top get hardened where no one cares? We use the debate of the Intel processor. A lot of proprietary stuff underneath there that no one cares. It's just, no one, it's, it works. It, it enables more value on top of it. So this comes up in the cloud. At what mm -hmm. point, where's the hardened top? And is that okay? It's okay to be, have full control. I mean, it's, it's proprietary Oracle stuff, but it's optimized for that kind of enablement. So what's your thoughts on that, that concept? I mean, is this the new Intel kind of model in the cloud? This is a concept of hardening what looks like proprietary technology could be open source or whatnot, but at some point, do people really care? It works really fast and eliminates complexities and so it's what you're really referring to is a term that a lot of uh, vendors don't like to use, which is lock-in, right? You're, in other words, to at what point are you at a, in a system where you can't move out? Uh, I don't think that that's the issue here. I think that the issue here is um, if if I can continue to meet the needs of my business, and you can make it as simple as I just focus on what I need to do and I don't have to worry about all no this buy. other stuff, all the operation, how it works under the covers, what the technology is and all that. If you're saying, I don't have to worry about that, I'm willing to pay for that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not down on lock-in. I mean, I, I'm, I talk about this publicly all the time on theCUBE. Lock-in with choice is competitive advantage. Sure. So if it works, lock-in with no other alternative is, it's like customers have no choice and they have to right. deal with it. But if you know, someone says, hey, here's a product that works better, yeah. and you have choice to switch to anyone else. Right. But this works, this is a, it's a great hardware and software. And that's not uh, a bad value proposition. And I'm sure that if Larry yeah. were sitting here, he would also point out that you know you write your code in Java, which is, runs on many platforms, yeah. and you, it's a relational database, and if you choose not to use Oracle extensions, it's very easy to move the data. Yeah, so. That's their open card, is, is Java. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you have a story, everybody has an open story and a choice story, right? Well, a lot of times choice people. and openness is just a, you know, marketing. Is marketing. Well, the truth well, is, I like mean, the, yeah, ahead, I was just going to say, the truth is that, that Oracle isn't the only, everybody's doing this, and I think, which is what I think you were getting at before, well not everybody, but um, you know, you look at Oracle, you look at Microsoft with Azure, you look at these other environments, they Absolutely. are, they are custom made to serve that environment, to serve that customer and those technical needs, and they have submerged the details that you shouldn't have to worry People about. People criticize Oracle because Oracle has more pricing power. 
than most so uh, because I'll, of the database. And right. they leverage that pricing power. And so, okay. Well, now there's yeah. another dimension of change too, which is that Oracle's, we already know this, that Oracle's move to the cloud has made them attractive to customers who are smaller than yeah. they used to deal with. Right. Because they so used to only sell database. Right, they've expanded their TAM as a result. That's a, that's yes. a good, that's a, that, that gives them more flexibility. Yeah, that's, a great that's a good point, and, and I'm going to give a shout out to Dennis Hallett, who's on the crowd chat, asked a question, commenting on, on the longer uh, single license deals. He says that logic is a little bit off from his perspective. He's seeing regular deals at 3 p.m. running 10 to 15 years, I don't know what 3 p.m. means, but uh, <laughs> um, but 10 to 15 year horizon. Similarly, we're seeing price increases in cloud apps among the major players. So two things, obviously the TAM is lower in the market, but he's still seeing price increases. Oh, that's, I, I'm, we're agreeing. I'm saying over a 10 year period, the, 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 the spend that you will spend on the cloud is higher than it would be on premise. If, the, you, yeah. if you buy, you're going right. to spend less than if you rent. The other thing concept. is people don't know how to compare these things. They're comparing what they're doing in, yeah. in their internal IT system today with what they're going to do in the cloud, but they're going to be doing so many more different things in the cloud. Right. How can you compare those yeah. things? You know, yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's yeah. great. We got great commentary. Tim Crawford just jumped in with similar commentary. Again, we'll be back more. We are live here. The Cube special pre-gaming of the Oracle Cloud platform announcement coming up shortly. Larry Ellison and top execs as we on stage detailing out all the successes, new features coming from the Oracle Cloud platform. This is the Cube. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break.